In 1983, when Gary McKinnon was just 17 years old, he went to his local cinema in North London to see a new movie called War Games. In the movie, a computer genius hacks into a Pentagon network. The movie had a big impression on Gary, and it got him thinking, maybe he could be a hacker too. Coupled with his interest in science fiction and mysterious flying aircrafts, his passion for hacking was only ever going to lead him in one direction. Between February 2001 and March 2002, Gary McKinnon was able to hack into US computer networks, where he allegedly uncovered a whole host of information that would land him in deep water, facing possible extradition to the United States. McKinnon claimed he'd managed to gain access to NASA websites, and in an interview with Rich Planet TV, claimed to have found information relating to advanced flying aircrafts. He claimed to have seen an Excel sheet which had the ranks and names of unknown people, as well as another sheet which had tabs for material transfers between ships. He tried to do some research on the names of the ships, around 8 to 10 in total, but was unable to find any more information relating to any of them. At the end of February 2022, he went on Reddit and did and asked me anything. This is where members of Reddit can reach out and ask questions. He said the following. Hi, I'm Gary McKinnon. I'll make this brief, but there are some things I feel it's important to point out, so you know where I'm coming from. Apologies for not doing a live video response. I have a couple of commercial projects on the go that prohibit me from doing audio video in relation to my story, and thanks to Reddit for inviting me to do this AMA. I was arrested in March 2002 for hacking into various government and military networks in America, looking for evidence of mysterious flying aircrafts and free energy. It wasn't a clever hack. No fragmented packets to bypass firewalls of any kind or the glossy stuff. I had a specific intention and like any good system administrator, which I was at the time I wanted a simple process that would catch basic weaknesses sometimes network-wide, with a simple script and a little creativity. It was cracking more than hacking. Like any sysadmin knows, the laziest solution is often the best. In my effort to find solid proof that the government and military knew about these crafts, I followed information found in a book by the Disclosure Project run by Stephen Greer. In the book, Donna Hare, who was a NASA launch photographic specialist, said that in Building 8 of Johnson Space Center there was a lab set aside for airbrushing out mysterious flying aircrafts, and this was from high-resolution satellite imagery. The tool I wrote scanned for local administrator accounts on window PCs. It was written in Perl, and scanned a Class B in 8 minutes. The low latency due to me running the scan on an already compromised machine on the same or another government military network. I found Building 8 by reading the comments section of the PC via the command console. These fields are used for auditing, and luckily NASA filled them all in, so I knew which PCs were in Building 8. There weren't many machines in Building 8, but one of the first I looked at had folders called Raw and Processed or raw and cleaned or filtered. The images averaged around 250 megabytes, and would have taken a long time at 5 minutes per megabyte on a 56k modem, so having remote control of the PC via a program called Remotely Anywhere I decided to view it live on the desktop, which was risky since they work odd hours at NASA. The image was coming down very slowly via the Java-based Remotely Anywhere program, so I cut the colour to 4 bit, 16 colours and shades, and the lowest resolution which was 640x480 I think. It may have even been 320x240. The image slowly filled the screen and all I could see was blackness, superimposed upon which was a blue-white planet, and superimposed on that was a tubular form that was metallic white, and had domes around its central circumference and at its ends. 
this thing had no rivets or seams and looked futuristic. Though of course with the low resolution and number of shades in the image, detail was lacking. This was my eureka moment. Donna Hare's lab was still in existence. I was waiting for this image to come down and was planning on the fastest way to get all of the other images to me. And right when I was making my plans, I saw the mouse cursor move to the bottom right of the screen. Right click the network icon and choose disconnect. I'd been caught and disconnected, missing my chance to grab even a single image. I never did any intentional damage or accidental. As far as I know, I'm not a vandal but I did leave stupid messages about disrupting their sense of security. My family and I then fought my possible extradition to America for 10 years, finally winning the case in 2012. I know this is an old story, and not too widely publicised in America at the time, so I apologise that there's nothing new, though hopefully interesting questions will result in interesting answers. Let me tell you what happened to me in 2006. The only odd men in black possibly kind of thing that happened to me. Apart from being followed by the same van for two hours one time across England. I lived in a bedsit at the time. Being unemployed due to my ongoing case. Which is one room in a shared house. I was on the first floor. One story up if you're American. My lady and I had gone to my bed on my fold-out sofa. I think we fell asleep around midnight. I woke up out of a really deep sleep, so I'm thinking it must have been around 2 or 3 a.m. I was woken up by a really sharp pain in my left heel, so sharp that I jolted awake and reached down to my foot to see what it was, whereupon I was forced to sleep again. It was like going under general anaesthetic, uncomfortable and unwilling, so I went from painful shock to instant sleep. In the morning, the first thing I thought was the pain in my heel. I looked to my foot and it turned out I'd gone to bed with my sock on, and there were two holes in the sock on my heel. I removed the sock and found two perfectly round holes in my heel, each around 5mm in diameter and one with a perfectly circular flap of skin still hanging from it, like someone had done me with a miniature paper hole punch. I can't explain to this day and can only assume it's a chimp. I've had trifilmeters on it. I've had a super sensitive magnetometer that showed nothing, but two lumps did grow on the heel in the months following the event, and they have now moved around to the inside of the foot. A number of fascinating archaeological discoveries have been made in recent years, helping us to better understand our past. These discoveries have helped scientists and researchers to paint a picture of what life would have been like thousands of years ago. However, it's important to note that over 95% of our history is missing, with the history of various eras prior to a few thousand years ago being completely unknown. This interesting photo was just posted to social media, and users can't decide on what it belongs to. The image in question shows what appears to be a large skull, with the original poster saying that they found it on a group that investigates mysteries. They detailed that the group was in Spanish, and that they had to do a little digging in order to work out what this thing was. The poster said they took the image and did a reverse search, but said that this didn't show anything. Intrigued by this, they said that they tried to look up skulls that most closely resembled this one. However, the user said they couldn't find anything that was a close match. They said the following. The closest thing I could find that resembled this was that of a gorilla skull. But even then, when you compare the two, they look different. The more I tried to research this thing, the more questions I had. It was allegedly found close to the pyramids in Mexico although I should note that a specific area wasn't given. This thing wasn't for sale, and the people in the comment section seemed just as interested as I was. End quote. 
The user continued by saying that after days of research they couldn't come to a conclusive answer for what this thing was, detailing that the eye sockets are way too big to be that of a human's. They said that they then looked into native species in the area, and said that jaguars can be found in Mexico. However, same as before, when they compared the two skulls they looked completely different. One fossil collector was particularly intrigued by the discovery, and said that when collecting fossils it's important to look out for restoration work, detailing that when a fossil has been restored it means that man-made material has been added to the fossil. For example, if you found a dinosaur tooth that was missing the tip, someone might decide to restore the tooth by adding a man-made matrix and creating a tip themselves. However, they noted that this doesn't appear to be what's happening with this skull, and points out that a lot of the bone appears to be smooth, further adding that when someone messes with a fossil or tries to restore it, you can normally see cracks and lines where they've been glued back together. The user said you can also see bits of matrix covering the skull, meaning that pieces of debris are still attached to the fossil, and therefore pointing towards that this skull must have been excavated from the ground. As of right now, very few have seen this photo, and after doing research about the area, reverse image searches, and looking through the animal kingdom in order to find a match, people are no closer to explaining what this belongs to. Recently, archaeologists said they discovered some new evidence about the Paracas skulls. Most people are aware of the Paracas skulls, the elongated skulls that were first discovered in the Paracas region of Peru, a desert on the south coast of the country. Julio Tello, a Peruvian archaeologist, was the first to discover these astonishing skulls in 1928. What initially stood out as the most unusual among the skulls was that they were the longest and most protracted skulls to ever been seen before. Over 300 were found, dating between 2,000 to 3,000 years old. It wasn't until 2014 when preliminary DNA testing revealed unusual findings. It showed that they have mitochondrial DNA with strange mutations that have not been seen in animals or humans before. The elongated skulls were just the tip of the iceberg. While skulls may become elongated due to deformities, or applying force on the skull for a long period of time, researchers soon realised that this was certainly not the case with the Paraco skulls. A researcher by the name of Ali Marzuli took note of more than a few characteristics that don't fit the norm for a standard human skull. The eye sockets were found to be much larger, the cheekbones were much more pronounced and the skulls weighed 60% more than that of a normal human skull. He also looked to a specific point of the skull known as the foramen magnum. On a human skull it's situated closer to the jawline, whereas it was closer to the back of the skull on the Paracas ones. After studying over a thousand skulls, archaeologists also noted that the foramen magnum was smaller, leading them to theorise that as a genetic trait. This led to further research and discovery of the Paracas skulls, investigating every part in great detail. Experts eventually noticed that they were missing a sagittal suture, which is found on all human skulls, and is a piece of tissue that connects the two parietal bones in the skull. Although not all Paracas skulls were devoid of a sagittal suture, most didn't appear to have one at all. This brought upon more confusion and intrigue to those involved in the research. As research continued, three skulls were used to sample DNA, one of which was an infant dating back 800 to 2000 years old. Hair and bone powder were extracted from the foramen magnum, whilst wearing protective clothing to ensure the samples wouldn't be contaminated. The samples were sent to three different labs in Canada and the United States and the geneticists weren't given many details, to reduce the risk of creating preconceived notions about the skulls. The DNA results were nothing short of fascinating. They came back explaining that one of the samples found that the hair samples wasn't a sequence found in human DNA. However, the other samples were showing that they came mostly from Eastern Europe and some Western Europe. When looking at the bone powder, they found that it originated from Mesopotamia. 
So what does this information mean? Essentially, it tells us that human migration was much more complex than we previously thought. It also points to the possibility that people from Europe and the Middle East made their way to the Americas a lot sooner than we thought. It may still take many years before experts are able to provide an adequate explanation for the unusual findings among the Paracas skulls, so we will have to draw our own conclusions. So what do you make of these interesting discoveries? And what do you think this skull belongs to? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.